Frank is uh, one of the ones who, over the years, developed code efficient here along our coast. Uh, when did you start? What was your first? We got my first code here in 1949. That was here in Destin. No, that was over Pensacola. Pensacola. Yeah. And back then we did have spring break. I was on spring break. I think that actually you know, there's a lot of things that. You know, the cold weather this year has definitely pushed back Kobe efficient. Many years, in, for the last 10 or 12, 15 years, we've had a Kobe caught by now already. And um, but this reminds me back to the year 1993 when we, had, we caught the first fish on St. Patrick's Day, the full pool caught it, and didn't catch another fish for 10 days, and that's one of the best years that I can remember in a long, long time. I think uh, the colder the winter, the better the Kobe fishing. The reason for that. Yeah, why is that? Global warning. Global warning. I'm ready for somebody to turn global warming on right now. <laughs> no, if if the temperature of the water comes up too fast, the fish will stay off the beach more. They'll follow the bait. But the way it is now, and the way the temperature of the water is gradually coming up. By the time that temperature gets to around 65 to 66 degrees, then it'll be April 1st. So that, I mean, I'm always, I never even started COVID fish until the temperature of water got to 65 degrees. And then, they're going to finish it. When it gets between 68 and 72, they will bust loose like hell. Yeah, that's kind of what I remember back from 93 when we had a cold like this. And um, some of the pier guys may remember some of the stories back then, but one of the days that I remember back then is called Bloody Wednesday on the pier. There was so many fish that day. It was really funny, you know. The morning was really, really foggy, and you couldn't see anything. And when the first watts of fish broke loose that morning, it got to the point where you could not literally throw at the groups of five or more fish. You waited until you saw one, two, or three because you couldn't catch one because so many people put them. And I think that when the weather's like this, it sets up the weather. The weather pattern is very important for Kobe fishing. Is it like last year when the weather was perfect? The wind was from the south, the current was from the east, and the lower current was from the east. And the fish can swim at any level they want. And you can't, you know, they can be on the bottom, they can be on the top. There's nothing to keep them on top. But when we have a really cold winter like this, it sets up a pattern where we have a hard current from the west. As the land starts to warm, it sucks the wind off the water. We get a nice southerly wind with the east current, and it pushes the fish to the surface, makes it much easier to spot. Everybody, everybody has their theory of uh, when they're going to be here. When the first one gonna be called, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but, I've always been a firm believer in the monarch butterflies. When you see them, it's time to get your rod and reel ready. The hell with the blooming dogwoods and the Japanese that are <laughs> They showed pictures of Washington, D.C. the other day and they got dogwoods blooming up there. So, when you start seeing the monarch butterflies, then you can start figuring out the cool. And that goes along with all the things in nature, you know. I, and like Frank says, everybody has an opinion on when the Kobe are going to get here and how they're going to get here. And, I'm a firm believer that everything in nature revolves around the moon. When the fish migrate with moon phase and not water temperature. When the fish are in the 10,000 Islands and Tampa and the Keys, they have no idea if it's warm, or hot, or cold up here. But they know when the moon's in the sky for X amount of minutes at night, but their biological clock says, I gotta swim to Louisiana and spawn now. So they start coming. And they're gonna, you know, the butterflies and the cobia and the birds are all going to get here about the same time, somewhere around March 20th to 25th. The weather out here is going to play a huge factor in whether or not we can catch those fish. If, if it's not warm enough when they get here, they're not going to be on the surface. They're going to be subsurface fish and we're not going to be able to see them. So the weather does 
play a tremendous part in our ability to catch fish once they get here. Everybody has their own way of doing things. And when I started fishing out of a boat, Cobia fishing, I was uh, probably the only person in Pensacola to fish out of a 15 and a half foot, hello, 15 and a half foot boat with a step ladder. 35 horse outboard price for engine. And I had a damn ball. I drilled two holes on top of that step ladder so I could put my rods in there. And I had to also had three or four rods to go around the boat. I only had about eight foot of freeboard on that little boat I had. But anyway, one day I hooked up about a 70 pound cobia. There was three of them as a matter of fact. And I hooked that cobia up and I weren't, I picked up my other rod. So I just stick it in the rod holder on the top of the ladder. Nub down a little bit on the drag. Pick my rod up, throw a cast that the fish was with it. Well, when I backed off from that ladder, that dude that I had hooked up decided he wanted to go south. And I thought I was going with him. So that little old boat did like this. I said, whoa, you better take that rod out of that ladder, man, or you're going to be out here swimming. And needless to say, I never put another rod up there that on top of that ladder. I fished 28 years by myself. No help. Well, I did have a little bit of help. My two oldest sons would go with me. And I would hook a fish up. I'd hand a rod to them. And one of them would hold the rod, and the other one would reel. <laughs> Until they got about 30 foot from the boat, and they said, here you go, Daddy. I said, no, 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 I can't, the gas ain't coming home. Bring him on in here. And that's the way it was when I took somebody with me. I never really started taking too many people with me until after, I think it was 90, 91. I was out there by myself. Had four fish hooked up, standing on a fan, fan tail of my boat, and a freaky ass wave come up, and if I hadn't jumped backwards when I did, I would have been overboard. And I was about three quarters of a mile off the end of Crystal Beach Pier. Well, needless to say, Tony Davis was out there that day in the Anastasia, he saw me, and he told my girlfriend, and from that day on, well, I wouldn't say up until now, but from that day on, until the time she left me or I left her, I have had somebody fishing with me. All right, now we're going fishing. We're going west. And a lot of people have their own theory about how to approach a fish, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. And when a lot of these pure jockeys, I don't call them pure rats, I don't I can't I detest the word rat. Pure jockeys. And I will say one thing, they're the best. The guys that run these big charter boats or any kind of charter boat that's privately owned, I'll guarantee you they got their experience from the pier. They are top notch. Anytime you can cast 85 or 90 yards and hit a bucket, you damn good. And they practice that all winter long. Am I right, Kelvin? That's right. But 